Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm White Pointer, and I guess I'm showing my age here because the first video game console I owned was this thing. This is the Mattel Electronics Intellivision, originally released in 1979. The Intellivision, which they helpfully tell you right on the console is Portman 2 of Intelligent Television, that was nice of them, was the main competitor of the Atari 2600 for several years. It boasted more powerful hardware, an innovative controller, and an array of licensed sports titles. And it may be hard to believe, but this was actually the world's first 16-bit console. The CPU was truly a 16-bit microprocessor. Alright, so let me just hook this guy up to my capture card, and... Uh... Hmm. Ah, uh, screw it, I'll just play some Intellivision games on the Evercade. It also started the very first console war, long before Sega would employ a similar strategy to lock horns with Nintendo about a decade later. When the Intellivision launched, Mattel opted for a pretty aggressive advertising campaign against their chief rivals, Atari. I'll try almost anything. So when Mattel Electronics asked me to compare their Intellivision games with Atari, I gave it a try. I compared Atari Baseball with Intellivision and found Intellivision played much more like real baseball. Then I compared Atari Football with Intellivision. Again, Intellivision played more like the real game. In my opinion, if you try them both, there's only one conclusion you can come to. Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. Spearheaded by sports writer, journalist and actor George Plimpton, they really made a point of directly comparing their console to the 2600 in a variety of ways in both print and television advertising. They compared screenshots or videos of games side by side. They compared controllers side by side. They boasted about their control disc having 16 directions compared to Atari's 8. They compared add-ons. You couldn't really find an Intellivision advertisement anywhere that didn't compare the console to Atari in some manner. Subtle did not seem to be a word in Mattel's vocabulary. I've been comparing the exciting new Intellivision space game Star Strike with one of the most popular Atari games, Asteroid. Star Strike has moving images that make the game appear three-dimensional. Asteroids doesn't. And Star Strike features our most exciting visual effect, total destruction of a planet. This is what the other game offers, which is why after Star Strike, Asteroids left me rather flat. Star Strike, new for Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. Atari, however, were not about to take that lying down, and fired right back. While not mentioning their competitor by name, they did nonetheless make a point to address the comparisons Mattel made, countering with statements that their controllers were much simpler to use, that their library of games was larger, and stressing that most of their games could be played in single player. Atari even spoofed Mattel's advertisements and featured a young boy dressed in a suit and speaking with similar mannerisms to Plimpton, showing popular arcade games such as Asteroids, Missile Command and Space Invaders running on the 2600, next to a competitor's blank screen, indicating that those games were not available on the competing platform. As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' Asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' Missile Command, but other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. Mattel returned to serve, of course, airing their own spoof of a spoof commercials that started in a similar way with a young boy comparing Atari games to a blank screen before Plimpton walked into shot to show the alternatives the television had to offer. When it comes to space games, nobody compares to Atari. Excuse me, have you compared them to Intellivision? Intellivision? Sure, they've got great space games, like Intellivision Space Battle. I didn't know. And now there's Space Armada and the incredible Astro Smash. I didn't know. Here, compare for yourself. In television space games from Mattel Electronics. Once you compare, you'll know. Eventually, it seemed like Atari CEO Ray Kasser had had enough of the constant back and forth and complained to the television networks about Mattel's attacking advertising campaign. 
This resulted in two of the three major commercial television networks in the USA, the NBC and the ABC, pulling the commercials from both companies. Though the remaining network, CBS, continued to air Mattel's advertisements. This even made newspaper headlines, with the New York Times reporting on the feud between the two companies that eventually culminated in the removal of the TV commercials. It's thankfully been preserved in digital form, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Hello, I'm George Plimpton. Here's an easy question for you. Okay, Mr. Plimpton. Which of these home video games looks more like a real arcade game? In television, Lock and Chase from Mattel Electronics? Gee, if people had this game at home, my arcade could be in big trouble. Or Atari Pac-Man? Blinky, you look pale. If you picked in television, you're, you're absolutely, absolutely correct. correct. However, as we all know, the Atari 2600 would be the one that would emerge the victor in terms of sales, crushing all its competition with around 25 million consoles sold. The Intellivision would ultimately end up selling around 3 million units, never really threatening Atari's market dominance. So, that's the story of the very first console war. <laughs> it was definitely an amusing point in history looking back on it, as there's no way you'd be able to get away with directly attacking competition like that in advertising campaigns these days. Mattel's strategy of going for Atari's throat obviously didn't pay off, but given the market crash was just around the corner, it's doubtful things would have turned out much different anyway. If you want to play Intellivision games these days, your best legal avenue are the Intellivision collections on the Evercade. If you want to learn more about the Intellivision and many other consoles, I'll throw in a shameless plug for my book here as well, so check it out if you're into this type of history because I cover a lot of this kind of thing. Drop me some comments below if you owned an Intellivision and or lived through this weird time. I'd love to hear your stories as I do read all of them. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, it really helps a lot, and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on my content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs> Who better than baseball fans to compare baseball games? First, Atari Home Run Baseball. Where's the diamond? Hey, there's only four right players. Right now, in television, Major League Baseball. <laughs>